One Zaga. Killer. I'd buy him now. Probably. It's been a while, my brother. It's been forever. Mm. It's been forever. You know, this is how I know. Windows. Yeah, I've said this is how how I know that we've grown old. I see grey hair in your head. My it's God. Grows every day. So as a metaposha na apa kai ring couch ya mo Africa ni on course. Yeah, it's to that day. Na jana eh I mean manja jan jan. Yeah, please. Fakir kona ni gani. Kai just in case whatever at pirate mo viruses. Eh? I've seen you come with your mask. Yeah. Me, me I even did like a designer as up. Yeah, Taking it very serious. Uh, that looks nice. Mm, at least we put some fashion to it. So yeah. This doesn't look like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. This, this is nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll look for something like that. Yeah. You should. Inspired it's, by. It's, it's only hundred kwacha. Oh. Mm. Mm. But my when I'm going to one is a hundred kwacha mask. Only as much. I'm done. That looks like that. Mm. When I'm going at Gucci, Shani. Mm. Yeah. People even pay even like. At least yeah, but you can even pass. Uh, you can pass people. This, this. You can pass people without noticing it's you. Yeah. With a mask. That's the yeah. That's a bit. You, yeah. It's hard to recognize Marks, people. Yeah. Some taxi driver guys stroked me. I'm in my mask with my cap and I'm doing some stuff. It's like, it's like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> they recognize you. <laughs> like, oh, what is the point? You said recognize. Not there. What good lines? Like, recognize. As for what you want. Yeah, because the mask, the mask really hides a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, hide. You can go anywhere, visit people, yeah. visit friends. Yeah. Uh, now you can even visit your friends at the flat because it's always crazy to visit friends yeah. at, at flat. Yeah. yeah no because a lot of people, it's crazy. Anyway, Zaga, you know, um, I'm. I'm How about s- what did it's like when they see you once? Like for example, today they see you. Uh, maybe you go pick up someone you need to use for some content that. I remember there was a similar story about me like I, mm. some time back, I think 2009. Yeah, I'm mm. a boy, I'm a I'm a boy, <laughs> yeah, I've been a celebrity, but th- that's why sometimes it's it's nice to stay off the radar. And I've noticed that you've done that a lot. Like yeah. you just, you are just off the radar. Che suri mo che uri che. You're just house number che Yeah, yeah, you 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 you, you identify <coughs> which points to touch that add value, mm. and which ones to avoid. Yeah, that just uh, are there to just. Yeah, that's true. Add no value. Yeah. So let, let's let's get straight into the conversation. You know, yeah. there's so many places I, I want to start with, but first of all, um, I want to start where we where we met. I don't know how you remember yeah. how we met. I remember vividly the first time uh, I met you. Did do you have any recollection? Mm. What's the, the, only what's thing, the only thing that I know is that first I think I saw your name. The first time I ever saw your name or anything was about Desert Eagle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the first time. Yeah. Like, that's a long like, time ago yeah, when like, I used to rap. Oh, yeah, now nice, yeah. do. And then that's Digital X. Yeah. When it was still at Carousel. Yeah, Carousel, yeah. yeah. And then uh, the next thing that I I remember meeting you probably at QFM. Yeah. Uh, when it was still in, in, in town, town. Indigo House. A few days when. Uh, a few months when it started playing Zambian music, because you remember back in the days, yeah. I never just used to play yeah, Zambian music. music. Yeah. So when it, they started, that's when we started like artists, upcoming artists. Now you start going to those corridors. Really now. Station, yeah, yeah. yeah. So my recollection of meeting you was I, I first met um, Sync. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you're one of the first people that he ever signed on to his regular label. First. You were the first, huh? First. So he first, used to, first, first, first. yeah. So he used to come, you know, to the stage. First, he used to call. Then we became friends. Then he would always call. Oh no, I've, you know, I've just signed this artist, Peterson. I'm trying to push him. Uh, you had, I think, you had about three songs. Then I think yes, you had. Um, yes. There's a Julia. Na na Pamela. Na Pamela. It was uh, was I in a fight. It was I remember. Dance. Uh, body girl. Body, body girl. Body girl. Body girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I remember that song. Yeah. So you know, he, he, we we became friends, and he brought the promo CDs. Then I, I remember I started playing them. Then um, he sent you to bring something to QFM. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first time. So he told me, "Oh, I'm I'm sending Peterson over. He's coming." I was on radio then, and I remember meeting you at the reception from the table. Cut. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that had red look, I think. It had red look. Yeah, but I just remember it was just like it's you didn't have you were not keeping no, no, the beard no, no, then. No, 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 no. 
I yeah. think I just had a few. A few. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had like, like this yeah. table cut and you know, this humble guy as oh I've been sent by Sync. My name is Peter Sen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you know, we had like a little conversation and you know and I think that's how we became friends. Yeah. You know, then you know, fast forward, uh, me and Singh became really, really close because yeah. after that then Singh signed Slab D, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Who else did he sign on the record label on that? Roberto has been part of Oh Roberto also Roberto, Afunika, <coughs> Oh even, yeah, Afunika, I remember Afunika. T- Come, oh, even even Maki too. Yes, even Maki too. Sync has been around, huh? Almost every person that I think Sync touched in their early days is a big star. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That Sync, Sync, Sync always had like a, a vision. Hand. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a certain hand. He's got a certain way he likes to work, and if he doesn't go that way, he will always just back out. out. Yeah, back out. Yeah. But if you're strong enough to 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 endure and move with the Sync way of working, yeah, he can make you big. Yeah, that's true. He can make you big. That's very he, true. He creates quite a very good relationship with a lot of people. Yeah. That's what I knew. I, I met Sync through Mwembe Muntu, the days that I used to back Mwembe Muntu. So yeah. Sync was good friends with Mwembe Muntu. Ah. And then Sync saw some talent in me when we go for shows. So one of these days he called one, I think someday in 2004, he called me to go to his place. We sat down. He says, okay, cool. So what do you want to do? In fact, I wanted uh, uh, a room. To rent to stay then they say that my place is a free room that is just stay like that you can stay there and what so i organize that myself then i said i'm moving in uh, how much am i supposed to pay you but me it's like just come in. let me even get you a bed wow yeah so he got me a bed got me a mattress got me everything and i started up from there the only thing that I remember he told me that for the next six months, don't go anywhere, don't <coughs> do what, just sit and write songs. I'm gonna book studio time for you. I'm recording, I'm gonna record you an album. And this is an opportunity that, like, I've, I was looking for for over five to six years. Looking for such an opportunity. S- looking for an opportunity for someone to sponsor your album, <coughs> or you, a studio time for you. Because you remember back then, it was not beg, easy. Yeah, you beg for just. The guys will charge you 40 kwacha to record you for one hour. Yeah, yeah I remember. And it's my one take. Yeah. yeah. So, Nenzena Pamela, I remember recording. It was a freestyle. Like, the only thing I had was a chorus. Then you recorded the first freestyle? This, like, no stopping. I started just going on. And if you listen to it, you can hear that there are no rhymes, no what. It was just, just going. trying to make tune and make sense. Tune and sense, make tune and make sense. Finished. I think on that day, it, it was at a studio called Soundcheck. Yeah. Yeah, and then I went to record. The guys gave me, because I could not afford no more time like during the day, so they give you a certain to come in the night. Yeah. So I remember waking up at uh, 0330 back, 04. Yeah. I walked from Kamwala to Carousel, you know, cutting the yeah, yeah. page. I was sick. 03? Yeah. Zero, yeah. Zero, Zero three thirty four. I was by Gareth Carousel, and then they opened up for me, and I recorded three songs. Which 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 studio was that? Soundcheck. Soundcheck. Yeah, yeah I remember Soundcheck. Yeah, I remember Soundcheck. Yeah, those were the first producers to work with me. Yeah. Who? Jerry? Uh no. Um, Emma. Yeah. The guy who used to play Emma. keyboard, keyboard yeah. for for Danny. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. The man James. But the first producer to ever record me was Easy Mike at Nexus. 2002. That's a long time ago. Yeah, and then from there, before that, I was working with Jerry D, Howard, Sam Cooley, Chica. I remember Sam Cooley. Lupupa. Yeah, I remember there was oh, a Chica, studio yeah. like Star Starquest behind City Market there where we used to go. Oh. Yeah, Kujia we were recording. Uh, there was no computer. There was just that digital mixer with the tape yeah. and then the microphone and you start and you've got guys to back you on my side backing a to my parts you've already written maybe a cafe smoker in one take the young girl and I'm getting it was crazy That's then it. I met up and then sync uh, gave me studio time yeah it was uh, it, then I think it was hard for you to have studio to, to, to have studio time to have an album out because they were just labels. Yeah. 
and that will re- uh, will sign artists and there were just maybe about three or four that we I remember present. Mondo Mondo there was Mondo movie movie I remember movie per se there was also Zintwastic I remember Zintwastic yes Tiki was already there then. Romaside was already there. Yeah, but it wasn't. A, it was just a studio. It oh, it was not the record label. Yeah, yeah that's true. Then, the, but Cipher was a record label. I don't know if yeah. you remember Cipher. Yeah, I remember Cipher. Yeah, Cipher was, was at, uh, yeah. Carousel. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cipher was. Ranel, a, yes, yeah, yeah, that's why I met Ranel. Bob Mabega Bob was there. Was yeah. there. Uh, I met a lot of people from there that I uh, making the Inferno. That. Yeah, the Inferno. Fred Banknotes. Freddy Banknotes. Yeah, yeah. they have all gone into TV now. Yeah, mm. yeah. Cipher, you remember Cipher? Even Kanji Hope. Kanji Hope. Hope yeah. The first Ranel song I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a Cipher production. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember from there. Yeah. Then I think the coming of Super Shine changed up everything because yeah. then if you just got a hot song. Like a song that is really happening. The sign you on. Then you have an opportunity to be give uh, like they would look for studio type producer, mm-hmm. pay that producer, finish your whole album. Then you f- finish your album and then they start selling. Yeah. I saw that happen with the third <clears throat> Jimmy over over. Yeah, um, Tiki made quite some money from that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Just off one song, they come from yeah. Shibata, comes the finish the whole really, album. The, uh, the they benefited really from sold. that. Yeah. They really saw it, and a lot of people now found it easy now to. Sell. I, th- I think I remember the first album. That's the one I did with Sync. Then at some point, she just told me to say, "I think we have attained what we wanted." So Which I one was it? the first album? Is the one that had Munyawole? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Munyawole Ono Promise yeah. was signed a fight. So do you know how how Munyawole got on radio? Yes, I do. Yeah. Now, now I'm signed to Sync. Yeah. I'm recording at um, what's that? What's that place? Uh, Jive beat, yeah, Jive beat. Just on roundabout, yeah, yeah, roundabout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bravo, hey, what's his yeah. name? Brio, Brio. That's yeah. where I met uh, Lona Shower, Benita Shower, yeah. Brio. I met Samba. That's where Bundu was, right? Yes, Bundu and uh, KC. Uh, Bundu used to record vocals, used to record my vocals. Yeah, but he's the one who made the beat for the set of reggae song "Te Kanya Love." And, but Casey's is one that did most of the songs. Yeah, most of the songs. But I think another joint was produced by Bundu, the one I featured Brio on, on the yeah. same album. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. But uh, mostly um, Casey would make the beats, and uh, uh, because he was in school then, mm-hmm. so the person that I would always find already was Bundu. Yeah, Bundu would record the vocals for me. Then after that, there's a lot of songs that I recorded that you go, then Sync goes there, because Sync now just put me at home, there's a taxi to pick me up home. Take me to the studio. I record. I finish. I call the guy. Picks me up. Brings me back. So I was. I was already a star before everything. <laughs> I was a big artist before I, I hit. Yeah. And I started learning <clears throat> how to keep myself home, not everywhere. Yeah. And then uh, the only place that I could touch is where the visit were crazy, Joe yeah. crazy and yeah. uh, Wazy, yeah. my brother. So they this. Then I told him, like, there's a song I recorded, I think you need to listen to it. I want to listen to it. Uh, he went to listen to it and he was like, okay, uh, I want you to find someone to feature on it. Who told you that? Uh, Sync. Yeah, yeah. Or Munyaole. Yeah. You need to find somebody to feature on it. It's nice. You just need someone to just feature on it because you're not featuring any people yeah. on this album, a lot of people. So find someone. I say, okay, cool, I will. But I've deleted some songs at the studio. Uh-huh. So, uh, no. He deleted, I think, a number of songs that were in Bobo Jan album. Sync deleted them. Why? Because he didn't feel them at the time. Yeah, like he didn't listen really to Nkani Akang Ono. He was like, no, this sounds like Ono, oh, and Ono oh, is already here. We've got a song called Ono, oh, the same chord, same vibe, same yeah. word. No, we can't deal with it. Just put and it. And he wouldn't just say, save it, we'll work with it. Yeah. Shift did it. <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> what? Sync was a so savage. You can, huh? Yeah, you can imagine. So, Promise also, uh, I, I had Mainza on. I, I think I called Mainza to go fish on. Mainza Chipenzi? Mm-hmm. On Promise. This is my Promise. <coughs> For there, like, from morning to about 16, I was trying to find a way. Then he just said, I'm not feeling this. And I think you should find another song where I can come and feature. Are you serious? Yeah. Mainza Chipenzi? Yeah. And you know, I'm like, Then uh, Casey was like, ah, just use your vocals. It's all good. We'll just use you at the chorus. So we recorded it. Say, 
when we create something that has got a vibe and you know even when we call him to come around um, you like it yeah so now i'm visiting in kamwala and we are chilling we are listening that time around your show was the biggest after on, on, on QFM. Yeah. Yeah. Rush one eight. Rush one eighty. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just I took, used to play a lot took, of Zambian yeah, music. You just took off from Boogie C. Yeah. The late May so recipe. May so recipe. So now you are playing songs and David we like you can't do like the afternoon without listening to Rush One Eight. Yeah. And then it was a popular show. Yeah. So now I found Ozzy. I put us on this record and everything like that. So without knowing that Sink has gone to the studio after work, he went to listen to it, it was mixed. I didn't know if the song was finished, mixed and everything like that. The only thing I heard is that I've got something brand new, blah blah blah. You started into Do you know how it. I got that song? Yeah. Now that you this how I got that song was um Sink came with a song, I think on a flash. Yeah. No, C D. It's a CD. Yeah, then then okay. we had yeah, CDs. CDs yeah. So so he came with the CD. There were, I think there were three songs on it. There was Munyaule, I think Oh No, oh no Promise and yeah, Promise. Yeah. So I think oh he no wanted promise. to put Promise as the first single, if I'm, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So he came. I loved Promise a lot. So I played, I loved all the song, but Munyaule caught my attention. Yeah. So I said, why don't you release this as the first single? He says, no, no, no. I want to do this one as the first single. So just copy this one. So me, what I went to do, I copied both Promise. I actually copied all the three songs. He didn't yeah. know. So I copied all the three songs and put them on the computer then I gave him back the, the CD. Yeah. Then that afternoon, I knew what I was going to do. I think I played your song, I think, six times. Yes, that I remember. It was like... It, become a, it became an instant hit. I've heard people talk about hitting. I think the first, you know, the steps of Zambian music. So is it right to say I... I made your first hit song. Of course when, you did. So I am responsible yeah, for your first yeah, hit song. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they I have seen artists like I've seen the first time there was there was a time when Zambians supported everything that is Zambian. Yeah. Whether I say hit or not. Then there was a time that they would say, okay, it's Zambian, but it needs to be a hit after JK did an album. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that time. JK and Danny yeah, actually. Yeah. So, but now we never had a hit, hit, hit song where you know that this, when we hear that there's a hit song around vibe, there wasn't there until Alubusu. Yeah. Wera Panyumba. Wera Panyumba. It was like the first time we felt like, what? Apart from Danny, uh, yeah, you know, the usual. Yeah, yes, that was like, yeah, we know this is good Zambian music, but where you have a song that major hit, hit. every person is listening to everywhere then everyone started thinking yes you can have good songs on an album but you an album you song. need to have a hit hot. song yeah that's how now everybody <clears throat> started recording and then from there we started working like you work on good songs but you need to have this song. song yeah and uh, I think the only the only one who changed that to say yes you can have a hit song but you need to have hit songs was Chameleon's another day. Yeah. yeah. Chameleon had like the whole album, yes, like the whole know, catalog. Next, next. I remember <coughs> when I was working on Munyaule album and Bobo Jan album, I was listening to Chameleon like if I feel the song is shaky, I'm like, no, I'm not putting it. I just want to have something. And it worked for yeah, you. Yeah. So now back to yeah. so I hear you introduce the song it starts playing and everyone in the house goes mute because now we are not sure is it for real or what yeah so i'm like that's my song yeah and the guys like yeah it is but how so um, we're like it's obvious sync has taken it yeah so you play it yeah you finish playing you start talking I rewind when phone selector. calls started yeah. calling yeah they started calling you like in three hours you played it six times yeah People started calling what yeah like what and the following after that i left for home like you i could feel something has changed about me like no 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 no, no. that experience yeah. i doubt if it's just for a day yeah so now i stayed home the following day i woke up i was standing by the roadside then we were staying in nivala for a by the roadside i remember that place where sink was huh? yeah yeah i remember i so, remember the place yeah so i'm standing outside the gate i used to have like a garden in between the road Bama Road and the house. Yeah. So I would go and water it and everything like that. So Sink told me to say, you can no longer do that. So I'm like, yeah, but my veggies and everything. Yeah, you find someone to be watering them, but you cannot be seen. 
<coughs> watering your vegetables. Yeah, watering your vegetables by the main road. So I'm like, okay. So I'm standing there. There was a lady who was watering, and I'm standing by the gate, watching her. And the first bus passed. Nyawo is playing. Taxi passed. Nyawo is playing. Another bus, and I'm like, oh. this has gone. Yeah. Oh can no, the song. The song went. He gives us a, an interview or something. Oh my God, so, I remember. Yeah, yeah so I made it big through your show. Yeah. And from there, it has never been a rewind. Yeah. I've just been trying. To. And that's how me and Sync really, really became really close. And you know, from then now, I kind of followed your music, and I, I was convinced. Like I remember the first time when Sync played the stuff. You know, when he brought those first singles, I listened to them, and you know, I felt you know there's something there, but. He could find himself. So when I heard the Munyao, I was like, for me, my first, he didn't see it, but my first experience was like, what? So in my head, because of, you know, at the time I was playing a lot of Zambian music, in my head, I already pictured how people were going to respond. Because even the messaging in the song at the time yeah, you was know. so relevant. And you had Ozzy on it. It just, it made perfect sense, you know. Yeah. And I used to enjoy it. You know, for me, I used to, I used to find pleasure in discovering new artists like discovering people like Willie Jinx's new songs yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and, and in, it, it also kind of transformed in when I started my studio I always wanted to work with people that I wanted to start from scratch so that for me it built something in yeah, me that I wanted to help easier. people it's, yeah. it's even easier to to start up with somebody than yeah. really work with somebody who's already yeah, established. established because it's, yeah. it's always hard to bend them they yeah. always know how it works for yeah. them yeah yeah, yeah. But you know, for you, for you, it was a very good story because you are one of the few people I can I can mention maybe another maybe four or five people that they start like that, then you understand your market, then you go on and now make now several hits and you now become like a very established artist. I, you know, for me, from there, it just it just got better. You just started moving. Then I remember then you went to Blaze and I was a little surprised, like why is it going all the way to the Copper Belt? Then when the album came out, I remember when that yeah. album came out, I was like, your, your first single was... Uh, I was like, Peter said, yeah, I was yeah. like, no, Peter said, I think. No, before that, I think you were on JK's song. Mm. Was it before or after? It was after. JK's song came after. Almost everybody that went to Blazer went after me. Oh, so you after had your album? Album. album? Yes. Then, then, then we did. New, yeah. Like, wow, this is the sound. Now. Then Jake and I came back. Yeah. Then that song came out. I think, you know, when I was recording my album at Ben Blazer Studios, a lot of artists that I approached to feature on my album that really turned me down. Wow. Like, yeah. Like, um, JK? JK is the only artist that even traveled all the way to the Copper Boat to, to come and feature? Yes, yeah. Which song is that? Bobo Jam. Oh, Bobo Jam. Yeah. 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 That was the second album, man. Eh? Yeah, that was my second album. Yeah. But I had artists that... So then I learned to say, yeah, people are in Osaka, they cannot really come here to just feature on my song and everything. If JK can, can do it, doesn't mean that everybody else is going to do it. True. So I have to just make sure that when I see an artist come to the Copper Belt to have a show, and I know he's able to add something, I... You get him. I get the, that artist to come and feature on it. So there are two artists I think that really disappointed me on that. Who, who are they? No, no, no. Just, no you have to. That's, <laughs> it's, it's, listen, it's a diary conversation. I so, don't think there's, there's there's nothing wrong with that. This is like you really want this guy on the album, and you is it Danny? Them, no, not Danny. Who? Dan, Danny, Danny. Really, I've never called him to feature on a song. But you've done a song together. But I've with done a song with. Him. For his album. For his album. He's yeah. called me to say come to the studio and record and everything like that. Dan is like an elder brother. Dan has taught me a lot of things. Yeah. Not by begging to say teach me this by by force. Yeah. He just sees me, he grabs yeah. me. I think a lot of young artists would get offended if they were to be handled the way Danny has always handled me. Uh-huh. In the sense that he does not care whether <clears throat> I feel myself so much, I've got so much ego. But he knows that once he tells me, I'm gonna learn something. Mm-hmm. So he will just come, maybe grab me by the neck. He will can, you know. He will language. say like, yeah, yeah. A, a little sarcastic. Yes, he's like, no, put me aside and teach you what you need to learn. Yeah. To a level, Danny has been very supportive to to my career. To a level where I think my job 13, 13 album, I recorded it at his studio for free. Nice playhouse, yeah. The level he will come and listen to the songs. I remember I did Amakwebom Church in a certain way, then he came to listen and he's like, ah, I think make it happy, make it just a bouncy song. 
the message will be there and people will still they'll, dance. They'll still dance. It's a church song. It's talking about it shouldn't be so Tools. emotional and uh, offensive. Or it can be offensive, but it's a happy song. It's making people dance. They forget that you are trying to talk about all these issues. So we changed up the the tempo, the what, the sound. It's like with Marie. Yeah. yeah. Try to get something. Let it sound like Nelaveko, and we started working like that. The other time he came in the studio and found me working on um. Kumbati kudia, kumbati. He listened. He was like, oh, "Wait, let me play something." Then he played that. Like, Danny. Yeah. So he's he's always been supporting. Nice. So now, I'm at Blazer Studios recording our album. I need to know the people that so refused to be I on the record. One of my the artists first. He came and we started talking. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Let's just do. Who this is that? Up. 17 18 hours I think I'll be free because during the day I'm busy doing other things and I'm like okay cool so let me all right talk to Blazer Blazer makes up starts cooking up a bit and uh, we are like uh, no this is what we're going to do in the evening we go in there to the evening and then I call that this as oh what's up like, ah my brother sorry I'm having dinner now who is that <laughs> oh It's dark because there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, that's that's so, that's the whole purpose of the having other this conversation. One, Do what the guy is like. Like we no, no, let's no, no. <laughs> we got a lot of things to no, talk about. But I want to yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, don't leave us so in the, suspense. So the other one, my people like, are so going to be very upset with you. What I'm finishing. <laughs> Yeah, mom, what I'm finishing is very is very common. I've had that like, situation. Like what I'm finishing about. <clears throat> I'm like, dude, you're just coming to feature on my song. I can also feature on your song. Yeah, it's a bad it's not like um, <clears throat> you're gonna help me blow. And uh, it's not like when I jump on your album, I'll still help you blow up. Uh, your album can do without me mm-hmm. or with me on it. Same applies here. But anyway, let's leave it. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, ah. It passed. I want so now everybody now the next thing I I I I told Ozzy to say ah there's a good sound here my brother when I was still recording my album <coughs> he was like so real yeah then he came to record and I think Ozzy also inspired me inspired me to realize that Ben Blazer can make certain sounds because he came to do potential yeah and uh, especially Cindy, potential Cindy, Cindy, well, oh, yeah. Cindy well, uh, yeah. you know Ozzy <coughs> exile unique and Louis X mm-hmm. they're very good at writing very sweet songs like Ozzy's melodies Exile's melodies are the best melody ever I think if you want to be creative and want to go in the studio to create something you can never go wrong by listening to Ozzy's music maybe If you know that next month, potential. yes, like next month I'm going to go into the studio and I just want to get Reference. into that zone where I want to make Zambian <clears throat> music. I think if you get all the Zo- uh, Ozzy album and listen to it, I don't know, maybe for other people, but for me, it really works well. I listen to Wera Son, Ozzy, Exile, MC Wabuino. Then I'm set for the next album. For melody-wise for next, and everything. Yeah, melody-wise and attitude and direction really it's what we listen to that makes us create what we create that's true yeah so if you know you want to create a certain sound you try to <coughs> to, to find people that will really invoke that emotion feel yeah, emotion, yeah. i think ozzy exile Where I saw his rumba, but yeah, he's got very good melodies. melodies yeah. yeah, and a few of Jamaican music I always avoid now to listen to a lot because they really make you. When you listen to some Jamaican music, they will make you really hardcore. Then you go away from Zambia, yeah, and then you drop. They're like, what is, what this? is this? Yeah, but if you get closer to some people, like you know, their songs like Nandi, Ozzy. Yeah. Nandi, Nandi, Igo. Chanda, chanda, chanda. Yeah. He he brings you in the zone. Say you're making some music for Zambia and let it have this happy yeah. bounce. Yeah, yeah. So he came around and then he recorded with Ben Blazer. <coughs> After I left, I was like, wow, he's just. Spark. I think we can go this direction with Ben. And Ben is is an artist where you can explain something using your mouth that you want to work on. Go home and come back and find a beat. 
of what you're trying to explain. Yeah, of that can be You know, because part. for him it works pretty well because he's a singer too. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that until later, later, later on. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I realized like three, four years later that... He's a very good songwriter too. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Until I heard him sing on the song, I'm like, actually, those are some of the people that make the best producers. But even like yeah. just producers, like even me, I come from like from a rap background. You know, the best producers are either we're very good s- singers, rappers. Or yeah, when 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 a rapper turns into a singer, they are deadly. That's exile. Yeah, yeah. Like even a, a Pompey. Yeah, yeah. When a rapper turns, turns into, into a, a singer, singer. Oh. yeah, yeah, you can't run away from. Yeah. So it's, it's it's been dynamics with the industry, really. But you haven't you haven't given us the names. I mean, yeah, but we can talk about a lot of things. No, we we can, but it's, yeah. it's 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 important that people. It's not like you are causing enmity. I mean, even I have a, I've had a fallout with you before. I don't know yeah. if you, you realize that we've had me and you have had a fallout, and I think we didn't speak for I think for like close to two years or so. But not it was not one that will give a lot of tension to be honest i don't even remember what the problem was but i just remember me and you didn't really conversate for like maybe i think for like two years then we slowly just started talking again and you know listen in this industry we're in we're always gonna have fallouts whether you like it or not you know we've had fallouts with everybody it could be on money you 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 had a misunderstanding on money or you didn't agree on certain things you know mm. and it's normal we can differ on on opinions i think we should do this or things yeah, should be done course, like, when, when it comes to which, which which is I normal think, you, you, but what i've learned about the industry there are certain things that um you can decide to dwell on and certain things that you can the, the instance the reason why i mentioned say there are certain artists that have uh, uh really disappointed me yeah is just to mention uh to anyone out there to say when you're working on something there are always people that are not going to work with your plan but we want to know that you are disappointed make, you so we can just laugh about you, you, you it now need, you need to make it work but i'm sure you but you, but you if still I, in if good I books got, yeah we are very in good books but like, that's why hey, that's, what's up, buddy? that's, that's why we need to talk about it you know when you mention names it changes the whole conversation to just letting people know that you can be disappointed on a project yeah but you need to make it work yeah so find ways of making it work even when you feel like oh but what but if i bring in the names it changes the concept of trying to uh, encourage a young artist out there peterson. to say when peterson doesn't show peterson, up on your album you can always make you're it you're just a politician no not really <laughs> you are. but if i bring in the issue of trying to say names then it will like it changes the whole conversation now to be like oh now there are chanchan and this is something that happened like in 2008 i only mentioned about it because it happened and yeah. the album got successful okay. still so but if i got the names like ah you know for you when you're together yeah, yeah. I can say, you know, Kevin, you did what, 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 but when but the, the person is not there and you're measuring it, you never know how it crutches somebody and and the conversation, you know, Zambia is excited. Listen, Zambia is very yeah, excited. Yeah, it is. Listen, Peterson, let's just be honest. Trigger happy. Yeah, of course, let, let's be honest, you know, and for me, that's the reason why I have this conversation because I, I want people to understand where we come from, you know, they've seen your success, you know, and people don't really know what you had to go through to get to where you are. You never know who you can inspire because most of the times when when you tell somebody do this or do that they feel like you you don't want to help them out but when they hear your story and they hear your struggles yeah. they hear what yeah. you actually had to go through it inspires you to make you feel like you know what mine is not even as bad if peterson went through that situation mine is not as bad you know yeah it, it yeah, took you yeah, that yeah, long to get yeah. to where you are like even my story like when i tell my story sometimes it's like what you actually went to, you used to walk to the station yeah, every there, time the re, there was a time that i would get like offended if i like i've helped this dude become whatever they like, are ah, or i've spent so much i've did what i did this and this and this, and this. but cuz there is a dream like when i was starting um with the friends and the guys that i used to hang around i was one of the first to hit not just more but big yeah, and huge yeah and and i was privileged to be able to say if i associate with another person next to me they'll get known and bigger you see i have brother wesi i can talk about it for example because wesi doesn't sing wesi is not a singer but wesi from uh but crazy 
you see, you even think he's from a crazy, but Wazi is just my brother who used to hang, run around with me. Oh, Wazi, 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 Wazi. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. Yeah, Wazi. So, Wazi reached a level where he can walk in any premises or anywhere. Mm-hmm. He's known, he's, he's accepted. And because uh, we worked so closely at the time that I was very huge. So I would not even, to, to, to reach to a level where uh, everybody started believes, you know, where is the Peterson's manager? And he did, after Sync did up uh, the recording and everything like that, I think did, Wesley did the all running around. When you go for a show, we arrive there, you try to find out where we are seated and blah, blah, blah. Just that, um, almost everything. And it reached a level where he can walk in any premises i think up to that he can, he can walk to a lot of uh, premises just because of association association and there was a time that i would feel like when i would do this for other artists for other what like i would say uh, you would feel like ah because the dream you're looking at shaman you're like if i do this a shaman becomes as big as i am then we can never suffer when i'm low he's there we can complement each other you understand Oh yeah, when Buga is like this, so you start working like that, and every like I met Maki two in twenty zero four. That's when you met. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Twenty zero four. I met him in two thousand and eight. He used to be a group called Valimbe, <coughs> and uh, he used to be a rapper then, and I I, I met him through Bayoka. How I met Maki two was um, through Bob Mabeg and Jerry Fingers. Yeah, Bob had a show at Mindolo Dam. We went there. And I was back in Bob, me, Jerry Fingers, and Bob. And the guy that organized the show ran away with the money at the gate. So we just remained at the venue. The show is finished. The guy is not there. And we are just seated there. So the next person we had to call was Bayoka. Ah, Jerry and uh, Bob knew Bayoka. Then they're like, we can only call Yorks. Let's call Yorks. <coughs> so Yorks, we call him. He was in Chingola. He comes in, picks us up takes us to Chingola, gives us accommodation and everything like that. I think sorts out almost everything. That's when I met Mac The following day he says, come, there's a studio called Zidia Media Inc. Come and record something. That's why I recorded Body Girl. Why is there a Body Girl? Yeah. So he gives us steady your time. He starts uh, recording and then in the afternoon he says, I've got a young brother, uh, my, my wife's young brother. Uh, he's coming. He also sings. Mac too. Yeah, and he does some video stuff. So he's going to come around in the afternoon. Okay, cool. The next time he came, in the afternoon he came, you know, who got bless. Yeah, humble. Like, yeah, and he was just on the camera, like documenting everything. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was just documenting everything. Then Bob Mabega is a big star. Then Jerry Finger is a big uh, producer. Producer. But Yoka is like a big guy. So came a time when they were had the, the time, their time, like they lock up themselves and talking so. We just remained with Mark to sit it outside on a pair. Mm. And we just start talking. So so what plans well, what are you planning and everything like that? And I am proud to say whatever we spoke that day came to fruition. Is what we are today. And we spoke quite a lot of things and it felt like this guy, I think I, I grew up with him or something. We just met, but it felt like it's a character or a soul that you've always been with. Yeah. And he was open, like, I want to do this. I want to, to do, I want to be able to <coughs> make my beats, record myself, shoot myself a video, do up everything like me on my own. And he did it. You understand? I want to do that. Like, that's what that's I plan. So I, I rap. I do it, but I still also shoot my videos. You know, even the videos for I'm bringing it back or this is why I'm hot. Mark II would shoot himself. No one around. Seriously? Yeah. You just he sets the, set the camera there and starts, this is why I'm hot. Breakfast in bed. Everything. You wake up in the morning, Mark II has got a song. He's got a video. And we met like that. We started talking. And then from there, I think because I got so close to him, Whenever I'm after the show on the copper belt, I'll end up going to Chingola. So I put a Bayoka at one because Bayoka is the one who can afford to put me in a hotel yeah. or a lodge. So I'll call Bayoka to say I'm coming, but uh, end up just chilling with Maki too and then collecting all his music. Then he would do DJ Boga. If there's a hot song, he'll remix it. 
Uh, yeah, I remember when you used to remix those. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, we'll make it so bouncy, and then I'll bring them to Lusaka. And mostly, if I bring back, I had a very good relationship with the uh, Horn FM DJs. Then, yeah, uh, Prodigal Master, Sun, Master LT? Prodigal Sun, yeah, Fox City, yeah, Fox City, uh, Costa ones up Co- to Costa, dead. yeah, yeah, Versatile. Uh, it used to be Versatile, Versatile yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> Ru, so I'll Ru bring baby. the music to them. Mm. This is the the guy from Chingola was making this though. Listen, ah, this is nice, and he started becoming big DJ Booga like. He would be pirated on the Copa Belt and Lusaka that big. And he shot the Ono video. You know, it's much. Oh, Magitou shot the Ono video? <laughs> yeah. No idea. Yeah, he shot the Ono video. He shot the Promise video. He shot that video. Even the one who designed my Bobo Jan album cover. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so my next album, I want him to design it because he's got a good hand. <laughs> you know, there are people that would design your CD and it won't go anywhere. Yeah. So he did the Bobo Jan album cover. Yeah. Wow. So I, told him, I, I didn't know that. I just told him, say, I want a, a cover and everything. Like, and he's like, okay, cool. I think I have some of your. What do you want to be on the picture, on the, on the album? I said, ah, anything. But I think even just my eyes is okay. Oh, I think I've got a bunch of your photos here. I'll try something. So he did, did, did. He just told me to say, send uh, the list and everything like that, how it is arrangement. So I sent him. I think I. I went to Chingola too because I was in Quito already. Recording. So I went there then. The fall, after some weeks, he came around with the CD. Me, uh, cover, what, what that was. And he's never charged me for anything. Wow. Never. That's true, friendship. Ever, ever in his life. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> it is through that that I met Dandy Crazy. I think I took Dandy Crazy to Danger Zone myself. I remember Dandy Crazy. I recorded Dandy Crazy's first song at Danger Zone. See, your mommy, uh, no. I there was just some ka song with some ka other artist, and then. Oh, I was thinking about his first hit. Dandy was so hassled. I remember yeah, he used to yeah, come to Osaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this big shoes. Yeah. <laughs> he was pushing. Mommy, 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 mommy. I What's love you, man. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. when he used to come. Yeah, man. yeah. That one was produced by Baska Baska. Yeah. And uh, I remember Bayoka, every time he wanted to sign an artist, he would always call me and say, I'm done, that. Yeah. So, I like his voice. Yeah. Hey, you blue men do whatever you want. You sign them. You don't want to 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 sign them. That's daddy crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I think I was, I auditioned Baska Baska for production at Danger Zone. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was the time when Makitu moved to Chidilawombo. He was working with the, I think some fathers there, some, some, some Catholic system or something like that. They had a studio and I think they used to record programs and church choirs and everything like that. Then Makitu went there, so the studio, Danger Zone remained without a producer. Then they wanted a producer. And they called me to go there. We sat with Bayoka and some boys. We started telling them, okay, try, you can make me what programs you use, Shanshona, I use Fruit Loops or what, what, or try to make a beat in a few seconds. They would make beats. Then you are seated there. Yeah. After, I think <coughs> about seven guys came. I said, I think the other guy, Baska Baska, can fix it. So you audition and yeah, so gave the okay for Baska Baska. Yeah. So wow. When I left the two down, I'm get some boys. Ah, panga my beat here, bad. So then I took. Uh, we went for a show. Me, Ozzy, and Mampi yeah. in Chingola. Yeah. After the show, the following day, I said, uh, "Mampi, let's go to. Let me introduce you to some guys here." Then this. you introduced Mampi to Makitu. Yeah. No, Makitu wasn't at the studio. Uh-huh. But Makitu was away. But we just found Baska Baska. But we found a beat that was made by Makitu. That that's the one you Mampi. What song was that? Yes. Uh, in fact, there was a song by there was a song on it by Joe Boy. Yeah. Joe Boy Home Nice is the one who did uh, the reply to Wakumbari. Yeah. Then Mampi we did it right there, <coughs> and then it was dropped. It became big. Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's when we were really starting to hear Makitu coming closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, Makitu was like, "Oh, but that's my production. You understand? Oh yeah, oh, okay, cool. He came around and yeah." I, I, I used to, like, I introduced Booga to Makitu way before everybody knew, like, 2006, 2007. Booga and Makitu are the same person? Yes. DJ Booga. Yeah. 
Oh, to sing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I introduced Buga to sing. Um, yeah, yeah. To sing, yes. Yeah. Buga, yeah. <clears throat> he was called the collector. DJ Buga, MK Makitu, uh, the Flavor Boy. Yeah, I remember. Uh, what was the other one? Yeah, he had a lot of. The collector was doing something. Another one was making videos. The other one yeah. was singing like with flavor. The, like he had a character for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Whole thing. Almost every year. <clears throat> interesting story i was telling the guys that peterson tells some of the best stories in the industry yeah. okay so yeah mo- mo- moving away from that um uh where, where, where do you want to go I, before i get to your political ambitions um we can talk about probably even um the difference between being popular yeah and actually making the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a conversation that you and i have always had in the background you yeah. always talked about how you know, people people always gauge somebody's success by seeing your name on the banners or flyers every weekend. And yeah. you you never for you that was never the situation. It's like that's not how you make your money. It doesn't mean that because you're on a flyer, flyer. every weekend. Yeah, for example what it speaks like every time you see a person on a banner, it means that the they're, they're very affordable. Affordable, yeah. Like Danny taught me that. So all you artists that are always on the banners, <laughs> then you are how, how can somebody the corner buy in Singalume this Friday? Chan Chan is Chan Chan nightclub in Tawama Saturday. Saturday. Chan Chan Sunday Chan Chan family Saturday. show. Everywhere, but how much? How is everyone? How come everybody is affording? I, I was bragging to Danny then in two zero six. Say. Uh, me, I've got shows every weekend, and I think then I used to charge two five per show. Mm-hmm. So that was him, good money then. Yeah, yeah. And I'm telling him to say so every Monday I have seven pin or seven five because I've got shows every. Day. So it's like, oh, wow. I think that's why you have shows every because you are cheap. Are you affordable? Yeah. Try to twitch it a bit so that you can have few shows. But make good money. That make good money. Which place have you <coughs> been to in Zambia right now? I'm like, I've been to what, I've been to what, I've been to what, I've been to what. They all afford, they could afford you, all of them. So, where do you think you've got demand right now? Because you're just like less than a year in the industry, and every place, every town in the country has watched you. So where do you have demand right now where they want you to go and watch? So what happens after now? I'm like, okay. So try to add value to something to yourself. You should be comfortable anytime to tell yourself to say, I know right now Solezi wants me. They haven't seen me in four years or three years. And if I go there, I know definitely pull the crowd pull the crowd even i went alone without being hired i'll still make my money people owe me in solos right now not i was there last month livingstone i was there last week kasama i was there two months ago so where haven't you been where they're looking for you (laughs) start so i started restructuring and now trying to decide on how much you charge i think lidity is the one who told me I think you're worth this much. I remember when Lily was telling me I'm worth five pin per show. I was thinking this girl doesn't want me to have shows. She was telling me, you know what? You're going to charge yourself that people will just hear and they'll be cutting their lines. It will happen for the next two to three months. But if your music is happening, they'll just realize that's what you're worth. So switching from... To five, five, three to five pin, pin. To, to five pin, I, I double. We can't do that. It is like you can. Do you see me everywhere having shots? No. Yeah. But I'm here. I just bought ourselves lunch. Oh, you thought somebody gave me this money? No, I get paid, and it's a good pay. It's able to stay. So start with five pin. If I told you start with seven, you'll be looking like, no, no, this can't happen. So I tried. Then it was fifty thousand. Mm, it was five, five million. 
Yeah, five million, correct. Yeah, yeah. five million. Yeah. 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 Oh, five million. <coughs> so, I think I did that. The first call I received, I was like, yeah, no, it's five. In fact, you start at six so that you stop at five. Or five, five. So, uh, first call, bounced second, bounced third, bounced. Bounced. Three days, you are because I was receiving calls every day, you know, at that time. Which one was the biggest song then? There was all new, new label. Oh, yeah, it was that. Yeah. 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 Like, um, so I talked to her, I'm telling her, say, I think it's not working. <coughs> like that. Said, yeah, the other thing is that probably maybe your music, yes, past, try to record uh, new music. An album and then reprise it. Okay, cool, I'll start. So I start. I went to Ben Blazer. When I was recording, somebody called me to say they wanted to do me a sh- they wanted me to do a show in uh, Ndola. I told them it's five pin, uh, six uh, six pin. Ah, six pin. Now we shall let down. We not. So you check out that car. A discount. I said, ah, but it's six eleven. Okay, I'm the number five five. I'm like, oh. Yes, yes, five. I think we can work with the five. So, she so, in the transport to No, you do transportation, lodging, and everything like that. Ah, okay, okay. So, I went there. The La Gondola in Chifu. Mm-hmm. 2007, I think. Did the show. Mm-hmm. And then, it fin- after the show finished, he was like, I think even tomorrow you can still be around. We just lodge you. Then, tomorrow you come again on Saturday. We can give you now at five flat. I'm like, eh, hey, people have got money. Eh? Hmm. You understand? So in two days, you're already so making day, yes. 10 pin. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, so <coughs> and everything. And I went there with Darizo. And went back. Because I was staying by Darizo's place the time I was recording my album. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I started seeing. Then I met, uh, then I started, I, I think from there on, I started playing with figures because I could see how it works because yeah. I even remember now in 2009 the first time I charged 10 11 10 pin mm-hmm. I started at 11 mm-hmm. I was just trying <coughs> some you started at 11 pin yeah mm-hmm. so I'm telling my I'm telling myself might end at now from 5 pin mm-hmm. I just bought 10 mm-hmm. like if it happened the time really it taught me what I think it can happen mm-hmm. so some guy called me to say he wanted the show and everything like that. We need to meet. He, want, he was organizing a New Year's bash. <laughs> so <laughs> we went to meet uh, at uh, Manda Hill then. Mm-hmm. We started talking, blah, blah, blah. So I went to meet a guy. I'm like, oh, okay. This is, a guy who, this is the first time I'm seeing a, 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 a guy who does shows, a white guy doing shows in Zambia. Mm-hmm. Uh, apart from. The one who is on the nightclub, the big uh, what's that club? Or, what's that? Uh, Circus nightclub, John. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is guy you saying I'm events. I'm trying to do events and everything. That's how I met guy, Guy Fisher. Guy Fisher, yeah. 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 So we met and I, he asked me, so, yeah, so how much is that? So it's about eleven pin. He's like, um, eleven. Let's make it ten flat. I'll give you. And he's like, what? People actually have money. People have money. Like, people have money. If you know your worth, they'll pay for it. Yeah, that's true. The only thing that we always get scared to charge what we are worth. Mm-hmm. We, because no one tells you know the way it works in Zambia is that when I know what you do, like today if you clinch a proper thing, a deal, when we meet, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about ah KB that move you did was major. I want to talk about something else. Even Corona. Mm. Like what you've done doesn't matter and it, I haven't heard about it. Mm. This is what makes us never know or never learn on where to improve you never know it's, it's hard for you to know your worth if your friends are not telling you you cannot always just convince yourself i think nothing up a man but if people compliment and mention if it comes from me or from market two or from slap or from jk you start thinking like ah, for jk to talk like that it means yes i'm on this level but we don't so the moment we start speaking to each other oh, invoke and raise a lot of monsters into who learn our worth but we stay away from each other who we'll never know the more yeah. we sit you see one of the biggest things that i would always want to do talk about is music markets 
yeah. as an artist, which yeah. kind of market are you trying to target? Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of artists trying to target the market that will never bring them money, but just hype. Yeah. I've seen that's the market that is on radio. And yeah, just and and you might end up finding yourself just singing at fresh as bash. You understand? And <laughs> When there's something that is quite a bigger... Uh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> because it's very true. You understand? You find your balance. Miss Nipa. You understand? All these pressures bash, you are there. But when it comes to real uh, concepts that can exposes really, you to the... Like the corporates. Yes, and, and the right funds. You know... The people with the money, basically. Yeah. For, yeah. You are not on that on, on their radar. You, you will be shocked that even in the baddest of time, like in the worst times where uh, there are no shows around, there are artists with fans that just miss you and call you. Ah, oh, only good yeah, you are. How is everything? Ah, we're just seated home. So no shows here. Yeah. You should come <coughs> tomorrow and get like a ten. You understand? You're like, this is my fan. He's not my friend. You reach there, you know, honey. No, you keep on doing what you are doing and, and you are driving home and you're like, oh yeah. And you choose those fans or you choose to distance yourself from those fans. Let's just quickly wrap it up, you know. Let's let's wrap it up on um, what what's your future in terms of, of, of politics? And I, I know you've I know that you've taken yourself back to school which is which is very important. Uh, I know you have got a couple of degrees now. <laughs> I don't know whether you want to talk about that. And you know, is that preparing you to get into the the political arena now, full time, going for the bigger? Yeah. So for me, politics is just something that it's an inspiration. It's something that is within me. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's not a career. It's not a. It's um. It defines what moves me, what makes me reason in whatever way it is. So I reason first, I, I love Zambia first, I love sanity first, I love justice first before I start thinking of my career to sing. Because my career for it to survive or anything, it has to be survive in a, a good environment. Conducive yeah, environment. Conducive, yeah. So, so I, I want to say that this is part of me, whether I like it or not, I, I, I would want to see a place when where when I drop a song, I'm able to make the money that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. If I want to start selling tomato, I'll mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, I I honestly wish we could go on, and, and I was telling my 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 producers that Peterson really tells stories, and I feel like we haven't even yeah touched half of the stories. But you know, um, for somebody that is upcoming and is is getting inspired, I think you know just watching this. You know gives you motivation to go on and you know just hearing some of those legendary stories you know it's just it's just so inspiring to be honest so yeah uh, i hope we can have we can have a part two soon and to be honest we needed to have this conversation and uh when need be uh you know i'll be happy if we can get back here and talk about it i think the more we talk about this conversation the more people can you know especially aspiring people they can learn and you know maybe they can be better people and you know we, we never know in a way or, or so maybe in the next 20 30 years people are going to sit back and watch these video clips and say you know these are videos or conversation that changed the industry and the industry is like this because you know peterson and kb sat down and talked about you know these things 20 years ago and now you know they've been enforced and everything now is good so for me these are very very important conversation and yeah. and thank you so much for coming through my brother thank you very much yeah